The distance between buildings here is 50 to 70 meters, sometimes even closer. We've been advancing from the very morning all along the front line. The enemy is fighting back, but we're pushing the rest of them out to the Azov steel factory. It'll be much easier when all of them are there. Now that fighting has moved out of populated areas, Russian and Allied artillery is playing a greater and greater role. On a positive note, there are no civilians in the plant itself, which has opened up a host of opportunities for for Russian troops and Russian artillery. They, they don't have to be so worried of civilian casualties now that the fighting has moved into industrial zones. But we've been speaking to fighters and they, they say that they have heard on radio uh, English voices, so English language voices, which says that there may be either volunteers, volunteers inside the plant, but there have also been rumors of NATO instructors who have been, uh, become stuck in the Azov uh, uh, industrial complex, and that is, uh, according to various reports, again, unverified uh, instructors or officers from NATO countries such as Germany, Britain, France, as well as neutral Sweden, according to the latest reports. The fighting here, as you can hear, is still very much fierce. They work professionally, in small groups. It would have been impossible to train locals to that standard even in eight years. We've seen foreigners, even dark-skinned individuals. Twice now, Ukraine has launched high-risk helicopter evacuation missions to Mariupol. Several helicopters have even made it out, though most were destroyed. The window of opportunity, though, is closing. With every day, more and more of Mariupol is liberated. And chances are high that soon we'll find out just who it is that Ukraine and its allies are so desperate to evacuate. Morad Gazdiev, RT, from Mariupol.